Hello and thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to speak a little bit about the brain. In the 1960s, a neuroscientist called McLean formulated what he called the Tryon model of the brain. This was a model based on evolution. So that these three parts are really how the brain evolved over time. Now the most primitive part of this brain he calls the reptilian brain. So this is really what is concerned with our survival. It's um, all the functions such as the you know, blood circulating, heart rate, body temperature, all these things that we don't um, control, that we're not doing consciously, and that they are really um, absolutely essential to our survival. And we share this with the most primitive of animals, reptiles, etc. Now, over time, some creatures, the mammals, evolved, and that um, gave rise to the second part of the brain, which he calls the limbic system, or the mammalian brain. And that is more sophisticated. It's also perhaps the seat of um, our emotions. It's where our memories lie um, in the hippocampus. It's also where the amygdala resides. The amygdala is a bit like the alarm center of the brain. I'm sure we'll talk about that um, in this series quite a few times. It's also where value judgments um, come from. So the limbic system, the mammalian part of the brain, more concerned with um, emotions. And then the most sophisticated part, which evolved again over time and is particularly prominent in um, primates, the higher primates, and most sophisticated in human beings, is called the neocortex. So you could think of that a little bit as the sort of executive functioning of the brain. Sometimes people think of it as the, sort of the pilot, the, the, you know, the sort of um, person in charge, as it were. Um, that's where our analytic capacity lies. That's where um, our appreciation for culture may, uh, may reside. It's um, really the bits of us that can look at the world and have thoughts and feelings and uh, be aware, self-consciousness. Now, um, these different parts of the brain obviously communicate with each other all the time. So it's not like it's a rigid structure, but it's a helpful way of thinking about uh, how, how we function at a, at a sort of neuro, neurobiological level. The brain, so the, the reptilian part of the brain, the most basic, is associated with the brain stem and is quite rigid, a little bit compulsive, a little bit rigid. As we go through the more sophisticated areas, they become more flexible and much more open to learning. And um, now why am I telling you all this? Why is this <laughs> important in any way? Well, because in a way, understanding what happens in our brain can help us understand what happens in our body when we're stressed and also really have a better understanding of what's happening hormonally, how we can understand our reactions, our behaviors in relation to stress or fear. And um, the next video will be about the fight-flight um, reactions. So that will maybe uh, expand on this a little bit. But I'm a strong believer that understanding what's happening to us gives us far more choice about how we behave. So, you know, in understanding, you say, ah, oh, that's what's going on. That might really help me to um, behave, perhaps to choose a different way of reacting in times of stress. Now, there's a wonderful uh, person called uh, Dr. Dan Siegel. He calls himself an interpersonal neurobiologist. And he's devised um, a very simple, but I think very powerful, kind of visual model of, um, of the brain. Uh, of this trion brain and he calls it the hand model of the brain part because he illustrates it visually with the hand uh, but he sometimes also rather humorously calls it the handy model of the brain because of course it's your hand and you can take it with you anywhere so in the hand model of the brain he shows that this part may be the spinal column this bit here this very basic would be that reptilian brain stem then on top of that comes the limbic system, the emotional mammalian brain, and on top of that comes this neocortex. So if we're looking at our head sideways, 
this would be the brain stem, then in the middle comes that emotional, and then this part here, the prefrontal cortex, the, the neocortex. And he says that when we are agitated or when um, things really stress us, this part of the brain and then this part of the brain, the reptilian and the mammalian, can get um, almost sort of bubble up too much and then we flip our lid. We lose our capacity to think straight, to analyze, to have a, a measured response to what's going on. And in order for this to come back online, we need to soothe and calm these two bits. And then that neocortex can come back online. So I think that's a very helpful way of thinking about this. And uh, many of the practices that we're doing in this mindfulness series are in order to calm that brain stem, that more primitive part of the brain, when we regulate our breath, for instance, um, when we soothe ourselves, we're calling into line the, the mammalian part of the brain. So really learning to soothe, to calm the system, allows our prefrontal cortex to come back online and to have a more thoughtful, mindful reaction. So I hope that this, um, this little brief little chat um, will be helpful to you in understanding what goes on in our brain that sometimes leads to our reacting and acting in particular ways. So I look forward to joining you for the next one, which will be about fight and flight. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you soon.